thank you for joining this session today. It's great to have so many people from all over the world joining in. Um, particularly impressed by people in New Zealand getting up, and I know it's five o'clock in the morning there, so amazing that you've got up and welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'll just now uh, share the screen for the PowerPoint. Okay, we're ready. So, a little context here for the way this project came about. It's part of an Erasmus Plus project where we're working with partners across Europe. So my company, Midland Actors Theatre, is the lead partner. And we also have Woodrow First School, ESEPF from Porto in oh. Portugal, which is a teacher training college. Herrenbach Mittelschule, which is a middle school in Augsburg, Germany. Pagev Technik School, which is a technology secondary school in Gebze, Turkey. The University of Social Sciences in Łódź, Poland. And we also have an associate partner, the University of Łódź in Poland. And this program is co-funded by the Erasmus Plus program, the European Union. And all but one of these partners were involved in a previous Erasmus Plus project that we did, which was about Mount of the Experts. And so now we've moved on, we've been continuing with the, many of the same partners and building on that with the commission model. So a little bit about myself and my own experience of Mount of the Expert and Dorothy Hetka's work. I first encountered Dorothy when in the 1983-1984, I was... Okay. I was a PGCE student for a year, studying with David Davis at the City of Birmingham Polytechnic. And his course, very much the focus at that time was on um, what people generally know as man in a mess. Dorothy's earliest work, man in a mess mode. And then in March, 1984, we went to see Dorothy for two days in her base in Newcastle and worked with her. And it was a very memorable, I'd say seminal event and I uh, posted something about that last week in the Facebook group and planning to write something about it shortly. And I think it's clear now, I think it's clear at the time, but very clear now in retrospect that this was a turning point, a change in Dorothy's work was going on at that time. She was talking at that time about her focus was not on, in the drama work she did, her focus was not on feeling it was endowing young people with expertise. So you could already see the start of the mantle of the expert system. And then in the 1990s, I was a university lecturer at the University of Wolverhampton. And I was working at that time with Yona Towler Evans, who was drama advisor for Dudley Local Education Authority. And she was using mantle of the expert. I think it's probably fair to say that she was one of the first people in the country to use Mantle of the Expert. Um, apart from Dorothy herself, I'm not aware of many other people who were using it at that time. Mantle of the Expert really took off, certainly in this country, sometime later. Um, together, Yona and I produced a teacher's pack for Dudley LEA on the Mantle system with Dorothy uh, called What's in Store. And I formed my company Midland Actors Theatre in 2001. And we worked subsequently with Dorothy on a number of projects. We'd go and see her for the day and she would advise us, give us ideas about the projects we were doing. And um, Yona and I also created the West Midlands Mantle of the Expert Network in 2007 and organized a number of events with Dorothy, including one in 2011 which may well have been the last one that Dorothy did before she died. So the plan for the talk today is to introduce the commission model system, to give some examples from Dorothy's work, particularly the, the most well-known project that she did, which was the Hexham Hospital Garden Commission, and offer some pointers for you as to how you might go about a commission model yourself. Um, obviously, that's the hope that that's what you'll go away and do. 
So here's a quote from Dorothy. I have a dream that has not yet been realized. I would like students not to learn what their teachers teach them, but to be people who solve problems in the outside world that their teachers bring to them. This is actually a radical way of learning. I want students to be citizens of the world. The commission model brings mantle of the expert to the real world. And I think this is crucial for what Dorothy wanted to do, not just with the commission model, but in general, to break down the walls of schools and make schools in the community more interdependent. And if this was her dream, it still has not been realized. So in an article in 2001, I think it was, she outlined four different models, ways of working, um, and they were drama used to explore people, which I think she really meant what we generally now call process drama, mantle of the expert, rolling role, and the commission model. To me, these are not really four separate models in the sense that Dorothy said, she had always been in one room. And I think they're related to each other and I'm very keen to see that all four of these models are developed, used, explored. We continue with her legacy. The, she said, in reality, the base building block of all four models is agreeing to work through invented and agreed fiction. So they are all four drama methods. And I think commission model of the four, the commission model is perhaps the least well known and the least used. And I think it has been somewhat misunderstood. And she didn't publish much about it, Dorothy. So we feel, I think, the partners on this uh, project and I, I think we feel that we are learning about it as we do it. And it is related to Mount of the Expert. So we are often looking back at what she did with Mount of the Expert. But I think it's been misunderstood and confused at times with forms of business training. And I think it's important to make clear the differences between commission model and business training. And this is a quote from John Carroll, who of course worked with Dorothy and was a student of hers. And he said, the commission model while it provides a bridge between school learning and a communities of practice approach of real professional learning, leaves the world of drama and joins the world beyond the drama frame and school curriculum. The difficulties of this approach in a school environment are all too obvious. It becomes a form of simulation that uses authentic inputs as part of an educational training model. Now, I posted this recently on the Facebook group and criticized John Carroll for saying this. And some people took me to task and said, if you read the whole article that John wrote, it's much more complex and nuanced than that. However, I do have problems with the statement here when he says that the commission model leaves the world of drama. I think it's important that we understand it as a mode and a form of drama, using drama. And it does play on the borders between the real and the fictional, but it is not a simulation exercise and it's not about developing business skills. So, types of commission. Dorothy said, there are literally thousands of commissions waiting to be taken up so that schools and community become more and more interdependent. And she envisioned, envisaged two types of commission that schools could do. So there were commissions within the school itself. And these are invented by teaching staff to serve specific purposes related to the curriculum. And so that model need not involve working with outside agencies. It can be within the school. So, for example, um, Dorothy's example, a simple commission may be a request from the nursery for a mat or a collage for the nursery to be produced by another class in the school. And... So that would obviously involve curriculum tasks in terms of measurement, designing, vocabulary, and other skills, as well as an opportunity to share and collaborate. So very much that can be modeled, that can be molded and designed to fit teacher aims and 
to fit the curriculum. And it's a quite a simple way to start. So if you're starting the commission model using that, then you might well choose something like that, the commission within the school. Then the second model involves commissions from the community in which the school identifies groups and organizations which could usefully be involved as commissioners, as the organization that commissions young people to do something. So it might include charities, museums, libraries, businesses, and so on. And the best known example, and the one that Dorothy wrote about in Drama Magazine, and this article called, um, it's available online, and I do recommend you look at it. The most well-known project that she did was Hexham Hospital Garden Commission. Uh, Queen Elizabeth High School was approached by somebody from the Northumbria Health Authority, and they were building an NHS hospital in Hexham. And he asked if students from the school would be responsible for designing the hospital garden, a memorial garden, to be used by patients, staff, and visitors when it was complete in 2004. So Dorothy said, thus I was given the opportunity to try out a system of teaching called the commission model. So Dorothy worked with a group of young people from the school and um, there was a teacher there, Kathy White Webster, who was very much involved with Dorothy in working on this project. So this is how it worked. There was a group of 34 student volunteers of mixed ability from year nine. So the sessions took place after school and there were nine teachers who brought different skills and offered different kinds of input from psychology, drama, English, biology, classics, geography, and physical education. And there was a set time on the commission. And this is something that Dorothy said was very important, that there should be a time limit to it. So the, host, the person from the health authority asked if the design could be completed, which was by June the 21st, 2003. And Dorothy said, as you can see, there is a set time. When this is determined, the promise always remains in our minds. So it's fixed in your head that you've got a time limit on this. We've got a job. We've got a certain thing to do. The measurements are set. The date we're going to submit is set. We can't play with them. After you've taken that job, the teacher's job is to find ways to complete and to do it. So, thinking about the differences between commission model and mantle of the expert. Um, Dorothy herself saw commission model as a logical extension of mantle of the expert. After all, in mantle of the expert, you have a fictional team, you have a fictional client and a fictional commission. In the commission model, you have a real client and a real commission. So it seems like a logical extension. But as, as soon as you start to think about it, you think, well, okay, what are the implications of that change? If the commission is real, where is the drama? If the commission is real, where is the protection of the fiction? This is always something that Dorothy talked about, that as it's fiction, it is a kind of no penalty zone. You know that there are not real life consequences for what you're doing. But if the commission's real, of course, then that protection of the fiction has gone. And if the children are themselves, addressed as themselves, where is the expert frame or viewpoint that was the center of mantle? By the way, when I'm referring to children or schools, this obviously could equally apply to different levels of working students at um, university or college. And of course, Dorothy also works with people in business, like managers at Volkswagen. So I think it's fair to say that the, the real challenge in the commission model is not so much for the children or students, it's for the teachers and for the education system. And the question, one of the questions that arose for us doing the Erasmus Plus project was, well, how do you address the curriculum within the commission model? 
Well, like Mount of the Expert, it's about knowledge and skills, but knowledge in context, learning in a context. Dorothy believed, and I think it's right, that we learn because we need to know things. We need to understand them, we need to apply them. One example she gave was an, a, a child might be studying French in high school for four years and still may not be able to speak it when they leave. But if she's working with managers in Volkswagen, she knows that they can learn to speak a language in a month because they need it. They need it for their job, it's directly related to their careers, and it means a lot to them. So a lot of what she was doing with Mount of the Expert and Commission Model was that giving it that context. We need to know these things and we need to be able to apply them. So as I say, this is one of the questions that arose straight away really in our Erasmus Plus project. How can teachers deliver the curriculum through a commission? After all, in Mount of the Expert, the teacher can select the enterprise and invent a client and tasks to meet curriculum targets. But if the commission is set by an outside agency, it comes with its own demands and challenges, which may not exactly square with curriculum targets. Well, Dorothy was certainly very aware of teachers' needs and the curriculum targets that they have. And she said, curriculum learning will be paramount, but it will be shaken into new connections and blurred at the edges as a holistic approach responds to the contextual demands of commissions. As a teacher, if you're working with an outside agency, you might negotiate a commission with them so that it meets both the organization's needs and your teaching needs. Or you might find that you can fold your teaching aims into the commission. But I think the commission also has the potential to shake up education and the way we think about education because as Dorothy said the commission drives the learning and that means in fact that there is no set curriculum map the commission itself taken to its sort of logical extreme the commission itself dictates the curriculum dictates what you need to look at what you need to learn what you need to study and this was clear, I think, in the case of the Hexham Hospital Garden Commission. Dorothy said, as time moved on, a complex and varied curriculum faced us, which needed attention to detail and careful planning of the kind not usually required of year nines or teachers preserving their subject areas and working within their boundaries. The tasks are formulated by the needs of the commission. This requires flexibility from all, as tasks have to be designed to fit the need, the terms, and the times, the time available. So all members of the team, teachers and students alike, have to submit to the pressure of the commission context and explore new disciplines and knowledge. So in this case, in the case of a commission, the teachers genuinely don't know all of the answers. And they're in the position, like the students, of wanting and needing to learn. So in Mount of the Expert, maybe you're pretending to be a colleague working alongside the students. I think in this case, in the commission model, you really are a colleague. And Dorothy said, I wish teachers would set aside what they know and their desire to tell. It could be argued then that the real challenge for the commission model, that the commission model represents not for the students, but the teachers in the way they function in the classroom and think about teaching. I think it's a different mindset as well. I think it's a question of, it's that question of breaking down the walls between schools and the wider community. Your thinking shifts. It's not that you can forget the curriculum, obviously, but you're now thinking in terms of serving that community and serving that commission and directing it towards that. So it's a shift in mindset, I suppose, is what she was looking for. This is Dorothy's chart, which she produced while she was working on the Hexham Hospital Garden Commission. It shows her considering organization, resources, 
and also mapping some of the skills that could be developed and the curriculum teaching that could be incorporated, such as in plant growth and photosynthesis. And it also reflects this chart, the importance she placed on creating a well-resourced working environment for the Commission team, which becomes, I think, more like an office for an organisation, for an actual Commission, than a school classroom. And she said the environment will be constantly rebuilt to serve the teaching tasks, to serve individual tasks. So I think the, the children or students have an expert frame of a kind. They are commissioners. In fact, uh, throughout the Hexham Hospital Garden Commission, as Dorothy said, the words teacher and pupil were not used. We were commissioners fulfilling an accepted commission for the citizens of Hexham. And she actually addressed the young people as commissioners. So in a way, that's a frame, a point of view, as you would frame people as an expert team in Mantle of the Experts. Kathy White Webster, as I said, worked with Dorothy on the Hexham Hospital Garden Commission, said the biggest real challenge for the teachers was to let go of teacher talk and move into commissioner thinking so they could work alongside the junior commissioners. Some teachers really struggled with this because at the beginning of the process, some were thinking in the business studies model and expected the route to the real presentation to be linear, and it wasn't at all. I think you can, people who know Dorothy would know that she would never be linear about it. My rule of thumb, the way I think of it is, well, in Mantle of the Expert, there's a fictional client and commission, but agreement to treat the demands as if they are real. In the commission model, the demands are real, but the team is set up and operates to some degree like a fictional Mantle team. I find that useful for myself anyway, as a way of thinking about it and seeing that there is this drama element, there is this drama mode. We take on a form of social role, we become commissioners. And in terms of the change or differences between Mantle of the Expert and the commission model, well, this was Dorothy's own definition of Mantle of the Expert, Mantle. I earn by my work, the right to be seen to be capable and responsible in upholding the stature of the mantle, which others may recognize as valuing and expressing what I stand for. Expert, I attend to the necessary study and acquisition of skills and knowledge required to uphold the quality of the learning that I undertake. So that's mantle of the expert. And I think you can change the wording slightly and you have the commission model. The commissioner. I earn by my work the right to be seen to be capable and responsible in upholding the stature of the commission, which others may recognize as valuing and expressing what I stand for. Expert, there is the same element of expertise because I attend to the necessary study and acquisition of skills and knowledge required to uphold the quality of the learning I undertake. So, as I said, by the way, these photos here are not of uh, Dorothy working in Hexham. These are photos of her working in Ankara in Turkey. And one major difference, as I mentioned, is that the safety of fiction has been removed. And so, in drama, of course, participants, as I say, don't have to live with the consequences of their choices and actions. But if you have a real commission, then, well, there are real life consequences. But she herself talked about protected responsibility. So the students, the young people are not asked to do anything that is outside their capacity or their professional skills. And they're not expected, I would say, to learn professional skills um, as they might do in a business training model. It's notable that in the Hexham Hospital Garden Commission, the children did not produce the final plan design for the garden. 
this was done by a professional garden designer. It would have been beyond their capacity, beyond their skills, if they had actually designed the garden. Rather, what they did was presented a report to the hospital committee, which included stories, poems, demonstrations, drawings, together with the results of a survey of local people into what the local people of Hexham would like the garden to be like. So the final design drew heavily on the children's work, but as I say, they weren't expected to assume skills in professional landscape design, which they did not have. Dorothy said that the work of a commission would always end in a publication, by which she meant some kind of public presentation of the work, and it would vary according to the nature of the commission, which built in standards and qualities because the young people are always aware that publication will be submitted to the original commissioners. So in Hexham Hospital Garden, they, uh, the presentation included a series of questions which the young people felt had to be considered before the garden could reach the design stage such as here, what should form the memorial element, a growing tree or an abstract form, how constructed and recorded upon, and should there be an area dedicated to children's interests? If so, what form might it take? And the report also included a book of garden stories and poems written by the children. Projections, models, demonstrations, drawings, displays, scenes enacted, short lectures and written notes. The landscape architect for the garden, John Goodfellow, stated that his design concept drew heavily on the children's work. He observed this work sought, I mean he, he was talking about the children's work, this work sought to bring together the feelings likely to be experienced by the future users of the garden and interestingly, of the garden itself. I was struck by the poignancy of some of the verses produced by the pupils. From these sentiments, I have the feeling that the garden should not be brash and modern, but appear warm, smooth, quiet and comforting. Above all, it should seem familiar. My concept is to create the feeling that the new building has been lowered into place over the garden, which has been on the site for many years. So if it's not about designing an actual garden, what is it for? What was the commission for? Well, to my mind, the children were not simply serving the client, the health authority. Rather, I think they were acting more as an interface between the client and the wider community the views of people of Hexham. What kind of garden do people want? What is the meaning and value of a garden like this in people's lives? So the question at the center of the whole commission was the garden itself. And in terms of curriculum, I like to think of curriculum less in terms of facts and bodies of knowledge, and I think I'm really, I'm really taking this from Dorothy. I think she always looked at it in terms of ways of knowing, scientific ways of knowing, social, personal, cultural, mythic, artistic. And I think you can see that in the Hexham Hospital Garden Commission, in the work that the young people were doing. They were looking at it scientifically in terms of photosynthesis, in terms of plant growth. They were also looking at it in terms of personal social meaning, the meaning of a memorial garden people the place of gardens like that in culture over time, and also mythic and artistic uh, ways of understanding and knowing the garden. So as we began our Erasmus Plus project, team members speculated. They were concerned perhaps that younger children might be somewhat intimidated by the responsibility of taking on a real commission. At the same time, some of our partners felt that some older students might well actually respond better to a real commission than a fictional commission and welcome the responsibility it gives them. And this is shown, I think, from a quote from one of the young people who took part in Dorothy's Hexham Hospital Garden Commission. 
this is the first time something I have done in school has been important to me. So at that point, we thought we would give you a five minute break to go to the toilet, to get a drink, um, and also an opportunity to post some questions on chat, which Amanda can feed back to me in case there's anything that is not clear to you or anything you'd like me to say a bit more about. Um, there will be a chance at the end as well for a question and answer session. So we're going to take five minutes. Is that right, Amanda? Yes, that's right. Five minutes. Okay, we'll see you back shortly. Okay. I'm just pausing the recording now. Some good questions in the chat. Yeah, do you want to throw would some my like, way? Would you like to do some of those now before continuing, David? Yeah, of course, yes. Okay, well, first of all, we had something from Viv in New Zealand who was saying that you know, in their models of um, curriculum there, they've got a long route of freedom, so they're able to use the culture model quite easily. So I don't know whether you'd like to say something about that, Viv. That pretty much says it all. <laughs> right, okay, that's fine, thank you. And then we have three people from Wales, Fiona, Andrea and Rachel, all saying something similar about the elbow room that they've got in their curriculum. Might be quite nice to hear a little bit more about that. Would one of you like to speak to that point, please? Hi, um, this is Fiona. Um, what we're looking at in Wales is a new curriculum which uh, doesn't have the constraints of a prescribed um, timetable or specification. Um, I'm a secondary school teacher and we're looking at introducing it next year to year seven. Um, one of the issues behind it is collaborative and sort of spanning those skills across different subject areas. And so I was thinking the commission model seems to be a good uh, sort of vehicle to help secondary experts perhaps take on mantle of other um, areas that we can be more collaborative. Yes and it'd be great for you to talk if you can to Cathy White-Webster who as I say worked with Dorothy and and has that experience behind her and she's a member of the Facebook group um, and of course it's in the case in secondary schools it might well be maybe different in Wales but it might well be a case in some schools of breaking down not just the walls between the school and the community but the walls between different subjects. I was working in a school once and I suggested, I was working with a maths teacher and I suggested some collaboration with different departments and he looked at me aghast and said, we don't do that. So <laughs> that's a, a new thing for some teachers, that process of collaboration maybe. Thank you very much. Uh, we've also got Lisa who was reminding us about how easy it is to slip into teacher and what that means in the current system especially in the UK and how you know how important it is to remember that we're facilitators of learning. Absolutely and this was really what Dorothy was all about it was shifting from teachers to facilitators to thinking of ourselves as facilitators so that's that's absolutely right that's brilliant yes. Uh, we've also got a, a, a nice point here about the irony that actually um, this is seen as radical in schools. Uh, such a lot of our curriculum is about sort of the make-believe, the things that would never happen. You know, if there's a sort of an artificiality about what we do in schools. And although this is seen as a drama model, that this is, this is to do with the real and the actual at the same time, it's that interesting hybrid between the two. And why is, why is it schools haven't got here earlier? <laughs> Yeah, I think the thing is that Dorothy viewed or wanted, saw really the classroom as a kind of laboratory. This was her image, that it was a laboratory where we examine things, we discover things, we research things and stir it around together. Teachers, students all stir it around together. And yeah, that's not what we have unfortunately, because of the constraints that we operate under. But that is the way we operate in the real world. And I think what she was about was partly saying, well, we can use drama, always use drama, as a way of accessing, understanding, learning, knowing. In real life, real life contexts, outside schools, as well as in schools. 
Uh, we're fortunate enough to have somebody here, I think I'm pronouncing her name correctly, Zieki, who was actually in that workshop in Ankara. Oh, wow. I don't know whether she'd like to speak. I don't know whether you were caught in one of the pictures, were you? Maybe she was caught in one of the pictures, yes. Would you like to say something about that experience, Yeki? Of course. Hello to everyone. This is Hello. Zeki from An This is Zeki from Ankara. Hello. Yes, I, uh, I was in that workshop, as I said before, and also I did my PhD study about commission model. And for my master thesis, I went to uh, visit Dorothy in her house. And David, I wrote to you from Facebook. You might remember yes. it. Yes, I did. I yes, I took some of the, uh, some of the pictures. Yes. And also, um, it was really wonderful uh, workshop. Uh, uh, something that I remember uh, when I visit Dorothy, she told me that. It was really difficult workshop for her because we uh, somehow we uh, bring uh, two different groups uh, to her workshop. One of them was from um, a private school and the other group was from government school. So it was kind of a mixed group and the group wasn't get on well uh, together. So it was a kind of uh, difficulty for her that's what she told me and uh, but at the end all the students were really really uh, in that workshop and something uh, what we did uh, in that workshop like um, it was on the stage and we were translating to the students at the same time and also some of the visitors were watching her workshop uh, from the other side, so it was kind of a stage work uh, yes. for her, and uh, and it uh, it was two days workshop, and uh, at the end all the students were really really happy, uh, but they didn't know about uh, what they have at that time, you know, like the treasure of the workshop. But at the end, uh, all the people who were watching uh, really really. Uh, you know, happy to see her in that stage. Yeah. And, uh, and it was a mental of the expert workshop, by the way. And she did uh, in Ankara uh, uh, two different workshops. One of them was in our international drama uh, congresses. And it was also something different because uh, when she came to Ankara, uh, lots of people who are working in drama field in Ankara wanted to attend to her workshop. And it was more than 90 people. And I was also in the board of our uh, association. It's called Chadash Drama Dani, Contemporary Drama Association. And more than 100 people wanted to attend to her workshop. And we had to break uh, to uh, three different group. One of them started. The second group uh, carried on uh, with the first group's uh, end part, and the last part, the last group, has ended. And at the end, 100 people came together to see what they did uh, and how it developed uh, the workshop, uh, where did it come, uh, or uh, how did it end. Uh, and that's, that's it, so. Yeah. Uh, and it was wonderful. Yeah, thanks for that. And she has published about that in English as well. So it's well worth people checking out what she wrote about the Ankara workshops. So thank you. Yes, it's it's uh, you can find it in our uh, association's uh, journal. Yeah, it's uh, free for free. Great, thanks. Yeah, well, thank you very much. For... That's lovely to have somebody from one of those workshops that has such fond memories of working with Dorothy. That's great. Um, I'm just going to remark quite a few people have said well, it would be great to have these slides. It would be lovely to have these quotes. This will all be captured on the recording and you'll be getting details about how to access that afterwards. So I'll, I'll just uh, clear that point at this stage for anybody who's anxious about that. Um, we've got uh, some questions about is this similar to design thinking? A couple of people see that there's some uh, resonances with uh, design thinking, not a model that I'm that familiar with. I don't know whether that resonates with you at all, David. 
Design thinking, yes. Um, well, I'm not a specialist in it, but on another Erasmus Plus project, we worked with a school which was very much based in design thinking. This was a school in Porto, Portugal, where it was, um, they very much undertook projects that were engaging in the community. And, and it was very open as a curriculum. So I think there are definitely overlaps there and things you can bring from design thinking to this, to the commission model. That was Priyanka and uh, Lisa um, having a little discussion about that, which is okay. nice. Um, the, uh, there's a reference here to John Goodfellow, who is uh, acknowledged as being very sadly missed, which is rather nice to have uh, him mentioned here. And we would like to feel that he's with us this evening. Um, uh, presumably, you could talk a little bit more about other commission models, maybe at the end yes, uh, that, that you are aware of. Uh, Robin has requested that. And... Um, were there, was there any discussion, says Amelia Bird, were there any discussions from Dorothy or the Erasmus Project about students feeling disappointed or not trusted to fully complete the commissions? For example, designing the garden themselves. I think it would be, um, Dorothy would be very clear from the start exactly what the commission was about and what they were expected to do and what they were expected to achieve. And obviously it's very important that you do that. I think it's when you negotiate with an outside agency, it's very important that both sides are clear about what the students, young people will be doing, what they'll be producing. And I think it's also important that the organization you're working with is um, taking it completely seriously and do want to use the young people's work. There is a bit of a danger that some organizations might see it as, oh, well, it's a nice thing for the young people to do, but we won't take it absolutely seriously. We're not actually going to use it. It's just a nice thing for them to do. So I think it's very important that the organization is really wants that engagement and that interaction with the young people. But I don't think they will be disappointed as long as they understand exactly what their role is. In fact, I worked on a project with Black Country Living Museum where it was, in, it was a question of, contributing design ideas to a, a garden in the museum. And the students actually went out, helped plant the new garden and felt a real sense of achievement. So yes, as long as you're clear of what it's about, I think, and what the um, expectations are. Uh, Viv um, asked an interesting question about whether there's an overlap with drama for learning. For example, did they get a chance to visit imagined moments in the future or walk in the shoes of those who will actually use the garden? Was there any extension work uh, in that direction? Are you aware of that at all? Well, sure. if I talk on a little bit more, and I will actually talk about some of the drama episodes and work that they did. And I think that will address what Viv's just raised. Okay, I'm just scrolling down quickly. I'm, I'm having difficulty keeping up here. Um, I think we need to move on, Amanda. It's all right, I'm just casting my eye down. I think if you continue, then I can probably put some of these together for later. Okay. okay. Right. So, in Mantle of the Expert, there's an imaginary client, an imaginary commission, and all the work exists for that client. There's a client in the head, as Dorothy said, and um, you're always aware that you're working for this imaginary client. So, in um, commission model, the agency, the commission, the client is real. And in the Hexham Hospital Garden case, the hospital wanted ideas for the garden design. But beyond this, there were, the clients were the citizens of Hexham who might use the garden in the future. And as this quote from John Goodfellow, this work sought to bring together the feelings likely to be experienced by future garden users, future users of the garden, and interestingly of the garden itself. So I use a phrase, I talk about imagined or projected clients. There's the real client, but there are also imagined and projected clients. This all relates to, I think it all relates to the question in Dorothy's mind of stewardship. So stewardship, I think, was really at the center of Dorothy's work. 
And she said, <laughs> she said that all work, this was, a, she came up with a mission statement. She said that a commission model should always have a mission statement. And this was the one she came up with for the Hexham Hospital Garden. All work undertaken shall be in the um, service of stewardship, not exploitation. And she said this statement encapsulates economy, service, respect, quality for fitness and purpose. That's the baseline for all the work of all the commissioners in the commission model. And I think it is about caring, very much in mind of the expert and also in the commission model. It's about caring in the community, caring for people, caring for the environment, caring for the future of the planet. And so when she places these imagined clients in the center of the work, I think that's partly what it's about. In the Hexham Hospital Garden Commission case, it's the imagined people who are going to be using that garden now and in the future. There was a, um, Brian Heap posted something in the Facebook group where he talked about a project he did with some high school students in Zambia. And they were framed as consultants to a fictional organization called Planned Parenthood International. And their job was to make recommendations on raising the AIDS competent child. And when they were making their final presentations, the school was visited by real representatives of Save the Children, Voluntary Service Overseas and DFID. And some of these organizations were involved in funding the project, the work that Brian was doing. And he, in that session, final session, he framed these visitors as representatives, directors of Planned Parenthood International. So there was this overlap between the real and the fictional. And yet, as Brian said, the main clientele remained generations of as yet unborn children. And so there is that dimension in the commission model as well of the imagined client, the projected client. And I think this is crucial because I think if you're only serving the, the real client, then you're doing business studies. So, Dorothy stated that Mount of the Expert works through dramatic exploration of seminal episodes. And I would say the same is the case with the commission model. So, as we've seen, the projected clients in this case were the citizens of Hexham who might use the garden in the future. And Dorothy created a series of dramatic explorations and imaginary counters with these clients. So you can see that what Viv was saying very much would fit into this. In, and this is where a major part of where the drama comes in. As with Dorothy's conventions work, it's creating that sense of an other. And one of the things in her diary, she for the commission, she describes one such episode. She says, teachers in role were seated, frozen in effigy. Each of them was holding a picture of somebody cut from a magazine, a bricklayer, a man planting seeds, a woman in a suit, etc. So these were all imagined users of the garden. And at first, the students stood in a group around each of these individual effigies or roles, discussing how best they should approach them, talk to them about the garden and about what they would like to see in the garden. And so this episode, and there's more you can read about it in Dorothy's article, incorporated a number of her conventions for dramatic action, which can all be seen as ways of creating focused encounters with others, with imagined clients, with bringing the presence of others into, the, into focus. So you can see there, it's a drama mode. It's about projected clients. And it's about stewardship. It's about caring what these people need or want if they're going to be using the garden in the future. And Kathy White Webster said that these sessions like this helped the students to see the different concerns garden users might have and to engage the heart in relation to different human contexts. And the work also brought in what Dorothy called the language of feeling, with students producing 
poetry, stories, working with depictions. And in one of the episodes, the students or commissioners were sitting separately in the space with their eyes closed. And they were listening to a teacher reading aloud from a text called The Voice of a Water Garden. And then other of the senior commissioners and teachers contributed their own garden voices, a wild garden, a garden of memories and so on. And in response, the students then wrote down their own impressions and later gathered in groups around one of the garden voice commissioners and shared their written responses. Then as a group, they created a composite poetic text or garden voice, which was read out to the whole group. And Dorothy herself wrote in her diary, I ponder on what this task has to do with planning an actual hospital garden, which is, of course, it's absolutely not the kind of thing you might expect. And certainly I don't think you get it in a sort of business studies model. And, but one thing to note about this kind of episode is that it was very much done as, as theater. And Dorothy herself talked about a dramatic tension that was involved in the way that the episode unfolded. And I was at a, workshop she did once where she said as long as you're thinking theater in the classroom you won't go far wrong and that's always stuck with me and here she was creating these dramatic episodes which were part of the exploration of what is a garden and i think dorothy for her a garden was very much a paradigm for stewardship she's written a piece that's in her archive or notes for something called Dor uh, the Garden, a dor uh, Paradigm for Living. And I would like to go and look at those notes at some point. In another episode for the Hexham Garden Commission, the students, commissioners, worked with images and depictions of garden features. Dorothy wrote that the session amazed some teachers from the school who just popped in to see how the garden was coming along. And here were their mixed ability students speaking as poets, firming shapes and spaces and creating images of mystery to be considered by their colleagues. So as I said earlier, it's for Dorothy, the classroom was a laboratory. And here they were students, teachers together as commissioners, stirring their knowledge together about gardens and using drama to explore their knowledge and their understanding and drama frames. I'm just going to explain something that we're working on at the moment as part of the Erasmus Plus project. And it's involving Midland Actors Theatre, Woodrow First School, George Dixon Academy, the University of Woods, and Black Country Living Museum. And the Living Museum is the commissioning agency. And the, the museum has asked for young people to review some online resources that they have produced recently for people studying, young people studying at home. They call it history at home. And they want these young people to review um, what are the strengths of these new resources, what could be improved, what works, what appeals to young people, and also to create some of their own resources, which the museum will be able to look at, refer to in developing future resources. So it is protected in the sense that they're not being asked to be designers of educational resources that will be then used by the museum directly but it will certainly inform the museum's thinking and i also hope that their work will be published on the project website and the curriculum content in this case is negotiable with the client we have a very um good relationship with the museum and we it's open for example what resources what subjects the children look at when they produce resources. So obviously the teacher is able to fold in their objectives, their teaching objectives into that, in terms of local history in particular. So the real client is the Black Country Living Museum, but there are imagined clients. There are the young people who are going to be using these resources. And Lisa Hinton, who's the leading teacher at Woodrow, who's working on this project, um, is actually going to start with um, building case studies of young people working at home and using the internet. And what are their needs? Creating individual case studies. And she's doing that. She's creating these imagined clients before the actual commission arrives from 
the Black Country Museum. Beyond those imagined clients, which are the young people, the users, what are their needs? How do they best learn? I think there are also other potential imagined clients in this project, which is to do with the people of the black country, the ordinary working class people of the black country and their stories, their history, their voices, which could, well, in sort of most history are not uh, neglected or ignored. So here's an example of a woman Patience Round, who was a chain maker in the black country. And she was working as a chain maker from the age of 12. And at the age of 79 in 1910, she took part in the chain makers strike. And there's somebody um, we've done some work around in the past. And there is somebody who's through drama methods, you can explore the voice of somebody like that and bring that to life. So, I'm just going to run through some tips for people in terms of how they might go about a commission themselves. So, obviously, the first concern is, first issue is identify the client. Find an organization in the community that you can work with. How is the client and the commission going to be introduced? Is it going to be in the form of a video? In Mantle of the Expert, it was, it was usually a letter that Dorothy worked with. And I still think that's useful, that you can have a letter from the agency that writes and sets down exactly what they want, the timeline, and it's a letter that young people can go back to and refer as they're working on the commission. Establish the timeline, the deadlines. Establish what exactly will the children or young people contribute or produce, and how will it be used. There is that issue I talked about, that making sure that the the agency is very serious about wanting that input from young people. What do the children need to learn or know to carry on the work with rigor and responsibility? What are the curriculum possibilities for the teacher? How will you scaffold the learning for them? Of course, you have to think that through. The mission statement, setting up the commissioner's office, thinking then about who are the imagined or projected clients? And what are the ways to make them present in the work? And think and plan in terms of episodes and what form also might the final presentation take? Obviously that can also be open to the young people to decide as they work on the project. And what event will mark the publication? When we worked with the museum, um, Black Country Living Museum on this garden they were the children were helping to design which was a a garden at the back of a chemist so it was an um, old style pharmacy garden they were designing and one thing they did at the end the final event was to go to the museum and to help plant the seeds in the garden so it was a wonderful ending to that project so what event will mark the final presentation so i think the plan is now we have a little time i think the plan is now that people get into groups and I suggest talk together about, well, if you think about, obviously you can't say exactly what kind of commission you might do, because you're going to have to go out there, unless you're doing one within the school, you're going to have to go out there and find an agency to work with. But you could think about, okay, I, ideally my, the kind of commission I'd like to do, I'd like to look for a museum or an art gallery, or um, one thing that Dorothy did was, she was planning at least for a group of young people to write an opera which would be performed by a local amateur operatic society so it's really open what you might try and do so what would be your ideal client to work with what kind of commission might you uh, undertake with them but then also think about who might be the imagined or projected clients beyond the immediate real client who would be the imagined client so i think amanda are you there are we going to have about five minutes to do that and then have a q and a i think is the plan i don't know if amanda's there are you there you're muted amanda amanda you're a i know i know <laughs> It wouldn't, it wouldn't unmute, I'm sorry. 
Uh, yes, I'm here and I've got some breakout rooms already set up for about five minutes just to turn those ideas over and then come back maybe with a little bit of feedback. So I'm going to create breakout rooms and uh, off you go and I shall call you back in about five minutes. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. Um, some people don't seem to be getting into a room. I'm going to see if I can do something about that. I can see who I'm in the room with. I'm with two other people. Right. Are you not talking to each other? They're muted. Oh. Uh, let's see what I can do about that. Ah, oops, but there's a Brian um, Edmis, Edmiston. Yeah, I got, I, I, I got kicked out, so I was trying to get back in again. Hi, Amanda. Hello. Hi, Brian. Um, we've got a lot of people here who seem to be muted and don't seem to be talking to each other. So I don't know whether they've just decided they don't want to talk to each other. 
or quite. I was, I was, I was in a break. I was in a breakout room, but then I suddenly. Right. Well, Can I put, do you know which one you were in? Who you were with? And I'll put you back in. No, I, I don't mind. Put me with anybody. I don't care. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'll take you to. This takes five minutes. <laughs> Ah, everybody's muted. Hello. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why people. And I'm not I'm sure. Doing that. I, I can't. I can't force people to talk if they don't want to. Yeah. It's only um, for five minutes. So. And I'm really not sure if Elaine mm, is from Hong Kong, and I know her. I'm not oh, sure. it would be nice if you could meet with her. <laughs> I, well, she's, she's, she's on mute and I can only see her picture. Oh. And then there's can, Irene Zach. Can, can you message her privately? Maybe she'll see that. Maybe she's, she's, oh. Maybe she's lost in... Um, lost in cyberspace. It is a very big group. It is. Um, and by the time I've got everybody sorted out, it'll be time to call people back. So, <laughs> so who is it that you were hoping to talk to, Suki? I'm not sure uh, if she was in my cohort. For the um, drama ed. Mm. So you're supposed to be in a room with Iona and Dee and Priyanka Chatterjee at the moment. Oh, well, I'm not. <laughs> oh, right. You said you could see everybody else, but those are who you're supposed to be. Um, and it just says that you've not joined. For some reason, you're not. I'm going to. If you can tell me where your colleague is, I can try and put you in that room. I'm. I'm. I'm not actually with anyone. I just saw someone who I thought I. Anyway, yeah, no, if you tell me their name, I'll try and get you in the same room. Uh, uh, Elaine, mm, but it doesn't matter. It, all right, okay. I'm going to have to start calling people back in a minute anyway. So. I, 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 I'll just stay where I am. I'm going to have to call people back now. Ah. Hello. <laughs> Hello, people are coming back. Oh, she's, this is Lisa Preet. She's, she's appeared. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Are you in the chat room? <laughs> no, I, I think I've just been sent back to the main bit. Oh, the, okay. Yeah. You you haven't gone anywhere, Zuki. I don't know why, but you stayed okay. here with me. Uh, I did I'm not know that, that actually happens with me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Everybody's trickling back now. <sighs> did you have a good chat, Lisa? Yes. Uh, yes, I was just in the middle of talking actually, and I was sent back here. Yeah, it's too short. Five minutes. We've all been sent back, I know. <laughs> it was a little longer than five minutes because it took quite a long time for people to get into the rooms. Yeah. And then I had a couple of people who were thrown out and had to come back in again. So by the time I'd done that, the five minutes had really gone. It goes very quickly when you're trying to manage this. So I'm sorry about that. Um, have we got David back? Yes, I'm back. Hello, David. Uh, perhaps Hello. Some people what are you doing? Have their screens off so that we can see him and then uh, we can start. They're just finishing off on my iPad died anyway. So I'm going to turn people might like to their microphone. I'm mute. Or I can mute them. Why are you on the floor in the belly? Where are you? Are you practicing your rolling? <laughs> right. 
Okay, so... I have muted everybody, so I was just waiting for David to unmute himself. Thank you very much. Well done. Yes. Uh, any feedback from those groups that you'd like to share with David? Hi. Um, we had a, a chat because I'd seen a question in the chat about sort of the ethics around it of could the commission model and the ideas of the students potentially be exploited. Um, and so we were sort of talking around, is there sort of an ethical framework around who you select as your commission partner and, and how, how that's managed? I think that's a very good point and something that we should look at. And obviously, yes, you want to be concerned that and I think it depends on what you negotiate and what you set up and um, being very clear about that and what the students are expected to produce at the end of the day. And I think you can see from the Hexham Hospital Garden Commission that there wasn't an issue about um, exploitation of what they produced in that sense. But I am aware, for example, I was very impressed by a project that this school in Porto did where they their children produced a new piece of technology and obviously in that case they had to look at um, who they were working with and how this was going to be protected so I think it's it's something that we will look at that question of is there an overall ethical framework um, but as I say, from my point of view, you are never asking the children to do something that would be a, like the resources that are being produced for the Black Country Museum will go on a website, but it won't be the museum's own resources that they are using. It's more of a, in that sense, of an advisory group, the consultants group that is being brought in. So thank you for that. That's a very good point. Do we have any others, Amanda, that we might pick up on? I'm not sure. Amanda, are you trying to unmute yourself again? <laughs> I think I think all the discussion points are within the groups, actually. Uh, there's not an awful lot in the chat from the groups. So uh, if people want to just uh, pitch in, that would be great. I'll say something. Please yeah, do, right. Wendy. Hello. Hello. Um, in our group, we, um, we had two uh, drama people and a geography person. And we talked about the opportunities for the collaboration between subjects and how exciting that would be if that were allowed um, but we also said that we sometimes get a bit confused about where the drama is in Dorothy Heathcote's work that um, like if you're in role as someone in terms of the commission model is it more about the project itself or does a young person knowingly take on the role of something else so it actively becomes a, like a, a dramatic role in which case that becomes quite um, kind of co complicated and confusing about where the, the idea of the drama is in it. And it's not just about there not being an, an identified product at the end either. Um, and then I think we also said, well, we're not quite fully sure of the difference between the commission yet and the mantle. And that actually at points they can seem very similarly close or interchangeable. So they were some of the things that we talked about in our groups. Yeah, I think there are links and parallels. And I think if you've worked in Mantle, then you will draw on all that in working in the commission model. And it's, I think as long as you think of it in terms of you are creating these drama episodes and that the young people know we are using drama as a tool to explore this aspect or that aspect, then drama will be built in to the whole project as you build in drama to um, Mantle of the Experts. Um, it's not just that you are 
in frame as a expert team, but within the drama itself, you have different episodes that explore different things, maybe from different points of view. And I think if you're clear that this is, what we're trying to find out is this, and we're doing it this way, and we're using drama methods. And I think that's the, but the fascinating thing and the exciting thing for me is that very much that it is, it is not a known thing so much as Mount of the Expert, and it is, um, it's not so much used or written about. And for me, it raises all sorts of questions about what Dorothy was trying to do, what she was doing, not just with a uh, commission model, but Mount of the Expert as well, and how she was trying to change schools or the way teachers think about teaching. And I think commission model was another step in that process. So thanks for that, yeah. Uh, we've got, um, well, I'm, I'm okay, I'm not muted. Um, we've got uh, some people who'd really like to carry on this discussion. And uh, if you look in the chat, we have an invitation from, I, I think it's Scylla, I hope I have pronounced your name correctly, um, uh, talking about the IB curriculum and somebody else, uh, Robin in New Zealand, would very much like to continue the discussion and has put their email in the chat for future dialogue. Um, does anybody else want to say anything? We are running just a little bit over, but I'm sure there's time for one more remark or comment or question. Somebody I hear is just unmuted. Is somebody about to speak? Yeah, I, I want to share you with my thinking. Um, I'm just asking about the, the connection between mental of the expert and the process drama. Um, have you, David, see that? Because we are in Palestine, we did it for many times. We concentrate more on dr process drama than mental of the expert. So, um, when I started thinking about mental of the expert, I just um, want to be um, to have the drama in the mental of the expert more. So <laughs> yes, I know. I, and I want to connect between uh, both of them. I'm. I don't, I wonder if I can do it, but. Uh, I know when I started working with Yona, who I can see is online now, and, and we were working in of the Expert, and sometimes she would turn to me and look at what I was doing and say, David, man in a mess, man in a mess. And it actually is a bit of a shift because I think it's just taking on that mantle frame, that expert frame, what Dorothy called the mantle view. It's, um, and within that, there can be different shifts in perspective within the drama work that you're doing. But I think through it all is that what Dorothy called the mantle view, seeing it through the expert frame. Um, her example that I always loved was that if you are, if you're an undertaker, you look at the world, you look at somebody, you meet somebody, you immediately start to think of what kind of size coffin they would fit best. And you always, in your role in any job that you have in life, you always see things through that point of view. So it's taking on that point of view is really, I think, the key difference with process drama and amount of the experts. But thanks for that question, because you know, it's a big question. But I'll also say that I think Dorothy was always in one room and she was always using just different methods to achieve what she wanted with young people. Um, she, I was at a conference once where she just said, um, you know, this isn't really about you all trying to copy being me. Yes. These are these are techniques that I have developed and I want you to go on and refashion them in your own classrooms and in your own way. That's so nice. there's, there's little surprise, it seems to me, that people end up with overlaps of her practice that sort of enrich each other and that, that they can take somewhere. Because Man in a Mess and Mantle of the Expert can very easily dip in and out of one another. And... Yes. 
I think you can see how Mantle of the Expert and Commission Model can do that a little bit as well. So uh, she was very, very keen above all things for you to become your own drama practitioner and, and not a clone of herself. But we have got so, so much that we can mine out of her models. And I'd like to thank you so much, David, for this evening. Shall but, I just post, yeah. um, share the screen again for a moment because it's got sort of email links and so on on it for people. Yes. Well, it'll all be in the recording and perhaps you would be kind enough to let us have your PowerPoint so that that I will, of course. people's yes. leisure. There you are. So you can email me is what I'm saying. You're welcome to email me. I think also that uh, Amanda and Chris will feed back to me points from the chat, which I haven't been able to address. And I'll try and email people with some thoughts and responses. You can also email me at david at midlandactorstheatre.co.uk and the website for the project is www.mantlenetwork.com and we also have our Facebook group on the commission model which you can find by typing in uh, commission model of teaching in the Facebook and uh, you'll find us and you can message me through that. But thank you everyone for taking part. And uh, if, if there is an interest, then maybe Amanda, we can have another session or have a smaller group. I saw somebody in the chat suggesting we might have a smaller group perhaps um, that could meet to discuss ideas and plan for commissions. Yes, absolutely. So if people want to actually feed us, feed us back some, um, you know, some sort of evaluative comments because there will be an opportunity to do that. That would be really great if people could do that and then we can shape a, a progression from this. So I would like to thank you again very much for exposing and uh, excavating, if you like, this model that is rarely used. And um, I, my, my sense is that at the moment we've, we've now got opportunities for this, that in the middle of this COVID dilemma, uh, a lot of thinking that has had to go out of the window has got to be replaced with something else. And there are opportunities in certain contexts for commission model to maybe have uh, some consideration in educational spaces and settings. David Allen, thank you so much for this evening. And I'd like well, to- thanks, thanks to thanks you everybody. and to Chris for organizing it. Thank you very much, it's been great. And I'd like to say thank you uh, to pleasure. all our guests from all over the world and to wish you a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night everybody, thank you. Bye, thank you. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Good night. Bye. 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 <laughs> bye. 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 How do I do this? Oh, bye. Yeah. <laughs> John, you're having trouble again. My laptop crashed and I had to end up switching to my mobile, so I missed oh. a chunk in the middle. Oh, well, you'll have to watch the recording, won't you, Rachel? Yeah, I know, obviously. And um, me and Chloe are wondering, who is the little bust behind you? This is Ludwig van Beethoven. <laughs> yeah, she was like, is it just Echo or is it someone? And I was like, no, it's going to be someone. This is David. <laughs>